Yeah, we're back again, eh? Season three. You know, I think when you, I think you were the first person to ever talk to me about the uh, the series. Well, at that point, I just thought it was a one off. And then, you know, you and I chatted about it. And I thought, well, you know, there's some interest here. Like, you know, people, people might actually watch this. <laughs> oh, it was such a lark, four hours, you know, on a, on a little boat going down a, you know, a canal. Who would have thunk it, right? Well, and, and in each of the previous two series, the audience response has been really outstanding. And I, a TVO must be uh, very excited about a, a third series. I think they're excited, and I think each year they're they're a bit surprised because yet yeah, you're right. The numbers were really good with the Rito, and then they got even better with, with with Niagara. And now, you know, I think the Bruce it should you know like enough people kind of know about it that you know it you know it, it should just on on the headline attract some viewers. It, it's a it's a beautiful area. Uh, it's stunning in so many ways. And uh, from a cinematography stand, standpoint, it, it must have been an absolute delight. I, I, I'd like to find out how you decided to uh, take on the Bruce. And it, it, you're right. It's, it's one of those places that you go to and you sort of instantly know that this is, you know, a really special part of Ontario. And what happened was, um, you know, the director and I, we were told, you know, you got to go to the Bruce Peninsula. It's, just, you know, like you said, it's a, this stunning spot, you know, very unusual landscape, crystal clear waters, looks like the Caribbean. And, you know, all right, <laughs> it sounded a bit like an oversell. And then <laughs> as soon as we got there, like, you know, you know, within, well, you know, you, you know, you're in the business, you know, when something's working and when something's not. And as soon as we got there and got out on the water, in 30 seconds, we said this, I mean, how, what's not to like, you know, well, you incredible know, landscape. Going back in time, I sailed um, through the waters of the Bruce on a, I think it was a 36 foot steel hulled sailboat. And I remember at the time how astounded I was at the clarity of the water, that when you were sailing through some of those rather excite, I'll call them exciting channels you know, with rocks under the water. And, and, and you know, you're, you're looking on both the port and starboard sides to make sure that you're in exactly the, the, the right direction. But what a stunning experience it was. And uh, you, you're on a sailboat in, in this uh, new episode. A 36 footer. Wow. <laughs> And they call those stones, I think they call them keel crushers, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, good and, reason. And, yeah. And, you know, Dave, who's a retired Scarborough police officer, he's at the front of the boat I, pretty well the entire run because, you know, they're, they're hugging the shore and he's just looking over the bow trying to, you know, identify anything. Cause as you know, some of those, stones are the size of you know dump trucks i mean they're and they and they can be rolled out from the escarpment almost anywhere so they come up you know very suddenly and um yeah and and, and can crush the keel well, i was pretty fascinated that you chose to do it on a sailboat rather than a, a stink pot uh <laughs> was it was it uh, uh, for the uh, the the beauty and serenity or was it uh, uh, just a uh, a logical choice in this case yeah, I think, you know, logical, just because, um, you know, it's, it's, an, it's known as a sailing lake, um, you know, and it, it, it's got a huge history. I mean, many of the wrecks were, you know, were, were sail ships, right? I mean, it goes back, um, I think the first, the Griffin in the early, late 16, early 1700s was the first, you know, sail ship across the, the upper Great Lakes and up across Huron they think is, is lost somewhere in Huron. So it's got a history of sailing. And yeah, I mean, I think for most people, 
when they see a sailboat as opposed to a powerboat um, are going to feel more relaxed. And, you know, the audio is always an issue for us, right? Sure. Um, you know, sailboat runs somewhat quieter and uh, a motorboat, uh, you know, would have really ruined that. And there's, you know, there's unbelievable sound coming off just the lapping of the water. And it's surprising what bounces off because, you know, those cliffs are so high. The sound that comes off the, off the water towards the boat is quite, quite you know, the sound of nature. As I was looking at some of the photos uh, that you had in your pre-promotion, and I, I looked at it, I thought, well, you know, uh, even on a 36-foot sailboat, there must have been some interesting technical challenges with people on board, equipment on board. Uh, uh, did that get sorted out to everybody's satisfaction? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's always a challenge to, sh to you know, to film these. And the above water really was was less of a challenge than shooting the shipwrecks mm. that was that to us you know each one you know last year trying to be a bird you know with a drone was a real challenge and then working with the actual hawk i mean you know we talked about that and the challenges of working with a live animal who's you know who's got about two minutes of work in their full, full in their entire day and this one was john and i were really we really wanted to cover <clears throat> the underwater seamlessly like it was above water. So at the same speed, without any kind of break in it, make it one camera shot with no interruptions. So we were asking, you know, these highly trained divers to do a 15 minute shot without a, a hiccup. And they're just not used to that. You know, yeah. most underwater stuff is, is quite, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, you know, and you're, and you're doing well. So that was the greatest challenge. <clears throat> and there's a fair amount of current there, you know, and especially the, you know, the wrecks that are any, anywhere near shore or, or near any kind of, you know, stone, because you're getting this back and forth current. And, you know, they, they're trying to keep, we had a camera hooked up to a, a scooter. So the whole piece of gear, I mean, it's neutral buoyant in the water, but outside the water, you're talking about <clears throat> maybe 150 pounds worth of gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> try and keep that steady and to try and, you know, turn it properly. That, that was the real, real challenge on this one. One of the things that uh, has really not only impressed me, but really excited me was, was the team that you put together on uh, uh, doing, uh, tripping uh, the Bruce. Uh, once again, you've got obviously an outstanding uh, camera uh, crew. Um, you've got technical people in behind to develop the story and the visuals that go with that, as well as the scientific parts of the, uh, the discussion. Uh, this team uh, on this particular series, they must be in a little bit of a mode by now. <laughs> they they kind of know what's expected of them. It's, it's still a, a, a marvelous group of people you've put together. Well, thank you. And, and yeah, and they are. And, and you're right, it's a team, isn't it? And yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the first thing we ever did, the Rito, we were trying to figure it out because TBO kind of said, you know, we want to do this sort of very relaxed, you know, documentary where, you know, we, you know, maybe we just put a GoPro on a boat, you know, and, and, and we just thought it was our responsibility to, to make that way more interesting. You know, that's why they bring in independent producers is that we sort of raise the bar. Well, what can we do to make it more interesting? Can we blend in animation? Can we put in, you know, information? Can we, you know, like to figure out the speed on that first one, which carried over to this one, it took us, you know, you know, days of running it at different heights and speeds so that we got the, you know, the, the, the spot where it really is relaxing to watch. Cause you put the camera a foot higher or a foot lower, you go a kilometer faster or slower. All of a sudden it's, it's not as interesting to watch. So yeah. it took quite a while. And then, you know, when you talk about our team, for me, the animator, um, you know, Matt Knight, like the stuff that he does in this one, we showed people some of the, 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 the animation where it's a, you know, a ship being wrecked and they thought it was real footage and they were frightened by it. You know, we had to tell them, no, no, this is, this is 3d animation. This, you know, this is what we imagine, you know, the ship went through, but there was no film back in, in the early 1800s. <laughs> you've done in your career, you've done well over 200 hours of factual production uh, of this, this nature. 
this series must feel like a high in your career path. It's a nice way to, 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 to bow out, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I wasn't suggesting you should do that <laughs> because I'm, I'm already wondering whether or not we're going to see next year a series on Lake Superior and the Agua Canyon or something. You know? Well, you, you're not far off because we, we, we do want to do a train. We think a train for a next episode would be, you know, just incredibly relaxing. There's something about that track in front of you and, you know, the view on the two sides and pan over to a lake and watch that go by and come back to center. I think, I think, you know, you, you said, when you said Agua, we've got another train route in mind, but we think a train would be incredibly interesting, particularly in Northern Ontario, where most, you know, Southern Ontarians, where most of us live, can't imagine, you know, these yeah. essential train routes that work, uh, that work the North. Well, I'm much relieved to hear that. <laughs> the thought of an impending retirement was uh, a little bit uh, scary there uh, because we're, we're getting used to these magnificent productions. And this one airs on the 15th of April on TVO. But you also um, have put the program together and, and, and you call it webisodes. And maybe you could just in a thumbnail, give people an idea of what the webisodes will, will cover. Yeah, so um, we, we, we thought, you know, with this one and each one of the programs that we can only, you know, show the viewers um, what, you know, the camera is seeing um, off that, you know, mostly off that main shot. So in this case, you know, you're seeing literally the top of the Bruce Peninsula, which is a very rare thing, as you know, as a sailor you can't get tour boats that go across the peninsula because it's, it's kind of a dangerous thing. Weather mm -hmm. changes very quickly. So what we're giving them is a pretty exclusive look at an incredible landscape. But what we can't do is give them some of the minutia. We can't sh show them, you know, the, the Massasaga rattler or the, you know, the bats or the, you know, the, the rare flora and fauna where we can't, um, you know, show them. There's just parts of, you know, the area of the cedars that are, you know, 1500 years old. I mean, they can see them on a wide shot, but wouldn't it be nice to really, you know, see a scientist and talk to them and have a scientist talk about the birds that migrate. So these webisodes are um, five different stories that kind of get into some detail about the area. And then we've got all the behind the scenes stuff where you see, <laughs> you see us, you know, <laughs> mostly doing, you know, um, the right things, but often, you know, <laughs> often making mistakes <laughs> and we had a crew follow us for a little while so that was kind of fun well, when i watched the uh, drone footage uh, of the sailboat off the the rocks uh, on the bruce and i thought i wonder if mitch has got a director's chair and if he's sat up on the bow relaxing <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice thought mike <laughs> you know what i'm more relaxed with the drone than the underwater stuff because the drone you see it you can direct it we're watching monitors the underwater stuff you instruct the diver you say okay you know let's start at the bow and you know get to the pilot house and you can give them as much instruction as you can but once they go underwater you can't see anything i mean yeah. so you know for directors we're you know we're naturally control freaks so that's not a that's not a particularly happy time uh, way happier when the drone is working we can direct that well, I, I would imagine that as the crew uh, is, is doing the footage and doing the documentary, and there's lots of action on board uh, at that time, the, is the crew doing uh, a, a full sail, or are you going back to a, uh, a home port uh, at the end of each day? Yeah, so we, 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 we start at Wingfield Bay. The full run is probably, I guess it's, you know, probably about four hours, but we, we ran it um, a number of times because, um, you know, you get weather, right? And, um, and it can come up so suddenly on that lake. Um, you know, one day we got weather where it was supposed to be a perfectly clear day, no wind, um, you know, and what, that's what we're always looking for, no wind, as you know, so the water can sit nice and flat. And we started to get these big rollers coming in. And I said to the captain, I said, you know, 
I thought there was no wind. I don't feel wind. He said, well, those are coming from the storm from yesterday at the oh. other end of the lake. So this is, you know, from the north. It took them a whole, the waves, it took the waves all a day to get to us, right? <laughs> so it's so unpredictable there and, you know, and, and scary unpredictable. And I guess that's why there's a thousand shipwrecks in Lake Huron yeah, and there's yeah. 27 in the park. I mean, it's just, it's a scary place to be on the water. If uh, I think less so now with modern technology, but in the old days, those sailors, what they- Oh, goodness you know, me, yeah. yeah. But it, 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 every one of the series that you've done has- brought its own challenges and and uh, uh and and demanded that you as as producer are are being inventive on how, how are we going to do this you know how, how are we going to make this happen uh, was the uh, bruce by comparison um, um an easier shoot or was it uh, uh, basically the same as as uh, the previous ones it's a good question i, I think that the, I, the Niagara was still the toughest. I mean, it was it was tough because it was in, in the middle of COVID and that was really difficult. And it was tough because, you know, we joked about it before, but working with a, a, a red-tailed hawk, I mean, they're grumpy birds. I mean, <laughs> you, you, they're, they're just they're the worst actors in the world. And they've literally got only, you know, literally two minutes of work in them. And they're un, you know, unpredictable, even though you've got a wrangler there. And then the river was so, you know, incredibly, you know, brutal to work on with those yeah. massive canyons. And so that one was the most challenging. This one, the, 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 the top of the water stuff was a little less challenging, but the underwater stuff um, was if I rank them, I would say Niagara was the most difficult, this one second, and then the Rito third, because, you know, it's a controlled body of water, right? And, you know, not too much could go wrong. We're within a city for the most part. So, you know, there's infrastructure there, you know, we can get coffee if we need to. <laughs> <laughs> the little things in life. <laughs> well, thank goodness it was a 36 footer that you were on the uh, gave you a, a little bit of elbow room as you were uh, doing the production. Beautiful, uh, beautiful boat. Absolutely gorgeous. It was, I, you know, you're a sailor and, and fortunate for you. I, I wish I had known about sailing because it's, it's beautiful. Like it's just that the, the, the idea that you can get on something and this particular was boat was ocean going that you can, you know, if, if, if that captain had wanted to, he could have come out of the great lakes down the St. Lawrence across the Atlantic. And, and it's, it's, it's free, you know, it's, you, you can go anywhere in the world and not pay a dime. I, I just yeah. love that idea. And I love the quiet. And I love the challenge of it. I, I learned a little bit about sailing. I'd love to do more of it. I think it's, I, I wish I had been exposed to it, you know, years ago. Yeah, it's a pr pretty exciting uh, sport and uh, uh, avocation if you're someone who's out there on the water on a regular basis. In, in the program, um, you do some wonderful pieces about uh, the Bruce, uh, the uh, biodiversity. Uh, you talk about the Bird Observatory, uh, the Bruce Trail. So there, there's a lot more than just being on the water and under the water. Uh, people will learn a great deal about this magnificent area of Ontario. And, and I think that's, that's right, isn't it, Mike? I mean, if, if you're just watching beautiful pictures, I mean, it's, it's sort of fast food, right? It, you, you digest it, there's nothing really there. It doesn't really stay with you for very long. But if you're seeing, um, you know, interesting, in our case, factoids about that landscape, if you're understanding, you know, that the, the Bruce Peninsula is actually the escarpment, it's the Niagara escarpment. It starts in Niagara Falls or in Queenston, comes all the way up. Um, it actually, where we were, it dives underneath the lake at that point, goes all the way to Manitoulin Island, comes back up, you know, hangs a left along, you know, Lake Huron, goes down to Wisconsin. And at one time, that part that goes underwater um, was actually above water because lake levels were lower. And there's, a, there's still to this day, um, an underwater waterfall that's higher than Niagara Falls that's underneath 
the water. And at one time that was, you know, exposed. And, you know, so to imagine that, so when you're, you know, when you're watching this beautiful escarpment and you're hearing about that, or you're hearing that, um, you know, Massasauga rattlers um, are there, or you're hearing that it's a karst landscape, you know, full of sinkholes and caves and understanding that, or you're understanding in the water that the lamprey eels were a, a massive threat to, you know, to the, to, to the lake and its fish and how those were eradicated. And so I think when, you know, when, when you get that kind of information and then you mix it in with the animations of these shipwrecks and you go underwater and you see the minutia of detail underwater of these wrecks, all of a sudden it's just an enriched landscape that, you know, you, some of that's going to stay with you. Uh, it's not just beautiful pictures. Well, we're very excited about the new program. Uh, it launches this Friday night on TVO and uh, it'll be available uh, online as well, will it, Mitch? Immediately afterwards, it'll be uh, on TVO's uh, uh, website, yeah. That's fabulous. Well, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, we're really thrilled for you. Um, I, I, this is so unique as a production. Um, I can't think of any other producer anywhere in the world that's doing this sort of in-depth and expansive view of, of particular areas. And uh, we're, we're absolutely thrilled for you. The, the success is well earned. And uh, to you and your team, congratulations. And we're looking forward to Friday night. <laughs> well, thanks, Mike. You know, uh, you've been a great supporter of the program and you're the first person I ever talked to about it. So, um, you know, it's always fun to, to reconnect. Thanks so much for doing this, Mitch. And uh, we'll, we'll be seeing you on TV.